All right, chat. I'll make these numbers bigger for you. Day 5,999 gets uh, shrunk down a bit. We take a sleep. We take a little sleep. And boom, day 6,000 chat. Welcome to the 6,000 day world tour of my season two hardcore Minecraft base. Uh, let's get on with the tour and show you guys what you're here to see. So first things first, this is my storage room. This isn't my base, this is my storage room. Uh, there's a difference, you'll see, you'll see. So what we have is a, a chest column for every block in the game. You can see like iron blocks here have two, two slots. It fills up this one first, then it fills up this one, and then it would fill up this one and, and then that one, but whatever. We, and we have it for every block in the game split up into chunks uh, or into, 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 you know, modules here. Uh, I think we can hold over 80 million items total. We have a shulker unloader that's just churning away uh, all these shulker boxes that are being unloaded, just pulling it out, putting it through the system. We can dump all our items in here as well, and it, it merges with whatever's unloading there, and it goes up and out. Let me uh, let me let me show you how we got some of this uh, done. We're not gonna look at that kind of wiring, but uh, I do plan on making this more observable by the next by the next uh, world tour. We're gonna, not gonna have it so enclosed. You're gonna be able to see. Uh, so this is the top of the redstone. What you can see here is, uh, these are just, you know, simple item sorters, but an absolute butt ton of them. There's over, I think there's 1600 item filters here. There is 45,000 hoppers. And between all of this massive stuff uh, for holding items is barrels because of the, the lag, you know, the, they're filled, these ones are filled with andesite uh, and you know, all things andesite will be down in here, like polished andesite. A lot of them just have stuff in the chest, but you can see like andesite, we have a ton of it. So it piles up way up into the barrels. This is actually a really good one uh, to see, but it doesn't make it over into the, into the next barrel. But there, the hallways just go on and on and on and it, it's killing my frames. We're at like 30 right now, uh, but that's what comes with massive storage, I guess. Woo. Okay, watch my head. Let's get up. Uh, it's it's a little it's a little tight. It's a little tight squeeze. It's a little tight squeeze. But uh, yeah, so this is where the items come up over here. Look at that. So they they come up. This thing only runs at the speed of hoppers, and that is for reliability's sake, because of how large it is i could be somewhere else in my base and only have half of it uh, rendered <laughs> or only have a portion of it rendered so we really have to make sure it's super reliable we don't rely on water for anything other than that elevator um and then we got a whole bunch of complicated redstone back here to get things unloaded and all that stuff but most of all of this is my design i think uh, I think the shulker loader was the only thing that I looked up. Um, over here, we have uh, kind of bulk storage for, you know, things that don't stack. Got tons of boats and whatnot, buckets of water. Uh, and, you know, here's where the overflow comes to. So this is where empty shulkers come to and things that we don't have sorted, like uh, like player heads. Yeah, we've unloaded a lot of shulkers. We got all of our mini or our mob heads over here. We got our player heads for 150,000 channel points. You can get your head in the game. And then whenever we need a player head, you can have yours uh, placed down. Plus we got all the mini blocks all kind of sorted up here. Um, so this is the main storage room. It's it's my uh, it's where we spend a lot of time. It was a huge, huge project and it's been working flawlessly for months now. So when we uh when we come out of the storage room we can see my base let's crank the render distance this is my base island uh it's made up of six individual islands some of them uh more man-made some of them almost completely natural uh shape wise but all of the land you see is man-made we flattened all of this and have 
made this a uh, let's face it north so we have the blue biome up here pink biome here green biome here these have all been completely covered in concrete powder uh this one and these two down here are still in progress uh but we'll go around everywhere and show you what we got i think first what we'll need to do is stop inside this mountain so you can see the journey this island has taken Whoosh, there it is there it is so one day this is going to be a cave and there's going to be a campsite within the cave and the campsite is going to be like frozen in time because each campsite or each tent has a uh, a map of the island at its different stages there's going to be five tents in total we have three so far so this has the original island uh, before any massive terraforming happened you can see like some farms and some buildings are here right but no no like actual terraforming had happened other than maybe like you know mining out some sand for glass or whatever but nothing 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 large scale uh, so this is what we started with there was a village in the middle uh, that right there has been our portal house forever it still is and that's where the portal is going to stay but it's not going to be in a little house much longer um oh you can also see this is our our mob farm our mob grinder that's up in the sky very early xp farm uh this is our drowned farm and this is our villager trading hall so that was there within a month of being in this world um and then the next step is uh the completely flattened island so this is everything down to sea level so you can see these the two tents are here uh the, obviously this bill the the villager trading hall is there the drown farm's been covered up for efficiency uh oh my hand is covering the mob farm but we have the pirate sheep it's our sheep farm and a pirate ship and uh we have some mob pens there and our tnt tree farm designed by Raiseworks, which we'll go see and our concrete converter over there we'll, we'll see it all we'll see it all uh and then this is the most recent map where we terraformed the entire island using moss so we built up custom terrain some dug down to custom terrain this one's mostly flat uh but really nothing changed farm wise we just spent a huge 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 amount of time uh terraforming it all and defining those biomes that you saw where this one turned blue this one turned pink and this one turned green uh soon there'll be two more tents once all the biomes are colored in and then a tent that we keep up to date uh after that with all the builds and whatnot oh, can i make this can i make this can i make it can i can I... did it all right so let's start uh oldest to newest i guess this is the villager trading hall it's the empire village building there's no states in minecraft that i know of just villages uh we, oh we have some halloween mobs chilling in some boats ah okay never mind they don't want to they don't want to talk they don't want to talk we're just gonna go in here uh we got zopa the zombified nitwit uh he, he dressed up for halloween and kind of just you know he, he doesn't want to change back he doesn't want to change back we got a wonderful lobby that he guards with his uh TNT. who gave the zombie tnt all right that wasn't that wasn't that smart um but it on each floor there's 36 villagers so these guys all have iron trades so these guys give us one iron or one iron gives us one emerald uh you know we got our our tool smiths armors and uh, weapon smiths on this floor then we have every book these guys are actually the floor that decided the scale of this project because we have every book as the first trade so luck of the c3 punch all that sweeping edge uh and you, you can see my glass holes here these guys trade us glass this is how we get all the glass for our builds uh there's about about two-thirds of them are, are glass holes uh we got clerics where this is where our main source of redstone lapis and glowstone uh they're all pretty good they're all pretty good farmers that's where we buy our food our golden carrots fletchers i don't use them too often masons these guys we get quartz from we've bought tons of quartz from them our loomers i don't, I don't know if we use loomers too often and then these floors start getting smaller because the cauldron boys and the cartographers we don't use too often but we do buy our maps from them uh and then we just get a viewing platform on that floor 
and the floor above has a viewing platform for our smokers and our fishermen. Uh, again, not very, very much used. But at the top floor in the peak, this is the trophy room. So in the trophy room, uh, we have our dragon egg and dra dragon head. He's just chatting away. You, you can ignore him. He doesn't ever say anything useful. Uh, but other the second podium that's been used there's still one empty podium but the second podium for one year of being a twitch affiliate we hosted a subathon and the most bits the user who gave the most bits got this pillar got to choose the block choose the sign uh colors and all that jazz was god's frosty absolute legend uh so on this wall you guys can redeem uh you know an item of your choice basically any item in the game except for you know netherite or beacons and whatnot uh get up on there and every time someone redeems it it becomes a, a thousand points more expensive so i think there's 47 people up here right now so the next person's going to cost forty eight thousand dollars to get your item right there and it only goes up only only goes up then we have the wall of uh, this is top bits. So we used to do weekly top bits. Now we do monthly top bits uh, and you guys can get your uh, names up there each month at the end. Kernelbot records that and we never miss a beat. And this wall is top gifters. So, you know, top gifted subs. Uh, obviously, there's the most recent. I want to have my spyglass on me. I think we're going to need a spyglass going forward. See no evil. We'll see plenty of evil during this. Uh, and these are my wife's horses that she decided need to be up here. Going down's much slower, but you know, we like to relax after all that trading. We spent a lot of money usually when we go up there. Emeralds, that is. All right, let's pop out of here again. See the wonderful views. Uh, let's head over to this island. This one's going to be the Black Island eventually uh, and some very evil themes going on here and very industrial. This is where we have our tree farm by Raiseworks right now. We actually have two of them. Uh, so let's let's just stop up here real quick. Yeah, there it is. We have one for the blue tree or the greenish blue trees, one for the red trees. Uh, we've actually been doing quite a bit of AFKing here, like while we take a break for a snack on stream and stuff like that. We get them both running. They, they're controlled by the same lever and button, and they both get going. See, trees grow, and we get the boom, boom. Turn it off. We have to, we have to wait. It has to complete its cycles. We're very careful about how we run these, because they are very finicky, but they've lasted a long time uh, since their last mishap they each got a bunch of storage we also store a ton of shroom lights and convert the rest into bone meal once those fill up so this place is great oh chat do i sleep do i sleep and make it day 6001 early or do i just deal with the night time uh so then here in this in the same vein of explosions and evil themes we have the concrete converter also designed by Raiseworks. um you know you put in powder here and it converts it losslessly to concrete blocks uh with tnt it's awesome uh chat says deal with the night all right we can do that so that that's what we on this island so far but what i really like about this island is i ventured out and made some amazing cliffs let's just get a flyby so I can't wait to see what these look like covered in black concrete and concrete powder. Um, but we got some real thick cliffs uh, coming off and the land gets taller and taller and taller the more north it goes. So it just slopes back down uh, to sea level. Don't mind the Enderman griefing. We're not big fans of them. And then our, mo our, our mobs are stored here, but they're not important. Oh, there was a, I didn't know there was a cat and dog here. It's been a long time since we've uh, dealt with them. Up here is my drowned farm. Um, it wor works day or night. This is an ill mango design, I believe, uh, where he tells you how to map out your uh, your rivers. We found a nice U bend here to create the maximum size river uh, where we can stand up in this place. The drowns will be attracted to that egg and we can come here and smack them. We can smack them. Uh, we use this for copper. 
Oh, and okay, we get tons of drown heads. We've actually filled up two double chests and we're trashing the rest of them now. Copper would go in here. We get salmon from it, but that's not too useful. I think um, a bone meal comes in here. I don't remember what this one would be. Oh, Nautilus shells. And then we have a ton of tridents. Uh, not that we'd ever need them. Because uh, we already have like, you know, a handful that we already have that we need. Um, while we're on the green island, let's uh, let's deal with the stuff around here. This is our pirate sheep, uh, or the pirate sheep. It's a pirate ship that farms sheep. Uh, we built this together during the subathon. Uh, we got on a plots creative world, and Chat actually got to design this with me, and we used Light Matica to build it up in hardcore again. Uh, and then when we did that, people could redeem uh, armor statues uh, named after them with their configuration of armor and such. Uh, the pirate sheep. Uh, let's show you guys how this works. So this is this is our captain's quarters. We got some treasure maps to go find our booty. Oh, there's my favorite booty. Uh, and we will go down the stairs. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's my there's my booty. It's it's actually. Uh, that's actually just wool don't, don't it's just yellow wool don't uh, don't question it um, But in here is actually the sheep farm. So all of these oh, that one's been had uh, its loot pinched But you can see some of these have a lot more uh, We've we come here and take colors regularly when we are doing builds colorful builds uh, like yellow has been kind of stolen but up in here is the redstone we got we got the sheep shearers and uh, chat got to name all these sheep Chat got to name all these sheep when they went in they're all claimed they're all claimed and they're all the signs are dyed the color that they produce we have one of each color and then I think eight white ones I'll show you guys the, the names on the other side uh, yeah looks real nice this is all inside the, the ship below deck from outside. You wouldn't know a thing. You come inside and it's it's a whole dang farm. It's a whole dang farm. And I think it looks pretty good too. We spent a while on this project. So next up, uh, actually, we're planning on terraforming this. This is a completely man-made hill. Uh, this was flattened and I added this in to deal with the contour of the land. We're going to have a... Uh, like a pirate cove here like a little shanty town with a huge dock right here that this boat is gonna look like it's pulling up to um, right about here so it's gonna be real nice uh, but the green biome is green because this is where we farm all of our uh, plants all of our natural stuff so cactus this is a Far we just finished in the last couple weeks. This is a cactus tower designed by Il Mango. That's I think 21 by 21 that goes all the way from bedrock up to uh, Y72 here for the floor, and it produces cactus like I don't even know where's where's it at. Oh my god, here it is. Yeah, so it creates I think it's like a stack a minute or something. I don't know. No, maybe not a stack per minute, but it's quick it just it just you know never stops there's always cactus flowing uh and it's, it's gorgeous so we, we're gonna we're gonna expand this in the future to for the cactus once all those barrels are filled up it's gonna go to another building that smelts it all so we can have instant tool repairs the the next hole on here is actually our current project you can see it's it's in progress i'm defining the shapes of the tops uh, this is our sugarcane farm. So this one is a 51 by 51 hole, uh, including the walls, that we dug down to bedrock and just finished digging it last stream. We put in all this sandstone you see today before day 6,000. Um, and we're just now defining the shapes so I can get my bearings on where the top of the farm and the bottom of the farm will be. Uh, but this is going to be sugarcane farm. We're going to plan on using Tango Tech's modular design, um, but it's going to look really cool. We're going to do some cool layouts with it, not just standard, uh, you know, bulk modules. Here's where we uh, burn our diamonds. This is going to turn into an 
altar of sorts or maybe uh, a temple of sorts for us to throw our diamonds in because every 25 follows on Twitch we do burn a diamond in honor of the new homies. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or TikTok, holy crap. Oh, he shot me, he shot me. Oh, I did not want pushed in that lava. <laughs> If you're watching this on YouTube or TikTok, twitch.tv slash Colonel Cole, you can check this out while it forms live, dude. All right. Next up is our squid farm or our squid game farm. Uh, we got we got some homies hanging out here and we got some more in the nether that you'll see uh, because this is a portal based farm. They, uh, they, the squids spawn here in the water that is between the portals and immediately go to the nether. Uh, but we do have... Uh, underneath, as you saw that pigman walking down there, we do have a trap for the pigman to collect their gold. Oh, hey you, bud. Okay, you can burn to death. Uh, this is farm designed by Logical Geek Boy. Yeah, and this is where they, these guys come. So we get a little bit of free rotten flesh and gold nuggets. Not all too important, but it helps with lag to kill them and not let them bunch up, you know? Hey, he didn't end up dying. Nice. Uh, then over here is actually the perfect AFK spot for it. That is ground level. I didn't want to put a tower up in the air for it. So we actually have uh, man-made rivers here. These didn't exist before. This was one big chunk of land, but we divided it up to do our terra during our terraforming. And if you stand here, uh, no even though there's there was a river here, we uh, filled it in. And uh, this is the only spawnable squid space when standing there. So turned out real well I think okay next we'll hit up the white island uh, you already saw the uh, what's inside the mountain but this is our marble monument let me let me just scale this with you chat so we play marbles on stream every day and the winner of the marbles Grand Prix that we play every day which is three to five races um, gets to pick a, uh, a block to put on top the marble monument uh, this is currently at the 117.1 build limit of 255.5 while standing on top of this player head of Lucky Bears. Um, so we had to start at the bottom again, but with the new world height increase, we're actually going to move this whole tower down to start at bedrock and then move this, this second tower to be on top of it. And hopefully that'll get us a lot more before we hit the next build limit. Um, so it's going to be a huge undertaking moving the blocks and keeping them in the same order to honor those that have won marbles. And where you see netherite, that is where I've won. And where you see beacons, that is where my chatbot has won marbles. Uh, the last thing on the island that we haven't touched yet or haven't discussed yet is this little farm here for bone meal. So this is a standard uh, skeleton spawner that they spawn in there and then we can just stand here and whack them with looting three. We actually have a sword here that I think has like smite on it or something. Yeah, this is this has smite. Um, so we can kill them better, if, especially if we get, I think, strength or strength two, we can insta kill them, even though they won't they don't take any damage. Um, and then we just got storage. It filters out everything except the bones. Oh, there's some bone meal left over. But we don't use this too often. We have other means for bone meal nowadays. This was a very, very early game farm. And then, there we go. That stuff's going. All right, let's pop on out of here. Yeah, the Slime King is not on the island. That's why I said last thing on the island here. Over here is our mob grinder. You saw it on the mini map. Uh, or on the maps that we took. Um, he has been, uh, com the, the mob farm was designed by Deathridge or Deathridge Craft. I don't know what he goes by now, but we encased him inside of a giant pink slime because uh, I am a pink slime. And we have, I think, a totally awesome pillar and underwater entrance to go up in there. So we're going to get in here. Um, this is me sprinting. This is a long tunnel, by the way. <laughs> and it just happened to perfectly pan out to go at this angle. So works really nice. Got our water elevators. We go past the slime filled podium. Yeah, by Death Ridge. 
Death Ridge on YouTube. And this is where the mob drops come in. Ooh, I'll take that head. I did not know there would be a zombie head waiting in here for me. Um, because we don't use this this so often anymore. But then we're up inside the the top, and we can just w smack away with looting, get XP. This was a great early game farm. Uh, we haven't had to use it in, in ages. So like, honestly, use it though. Um, and let's head down. Super safe, super efficient. We have spawn proofed underneath the ocean and everything. So it's a good time. I think our only conduit that we have permanently set up is there too. Uh, I think that, I think that's it. Oh, these orange squares and you probably seen them all around the island and they're in a perfect grid everywhere. Uh, these are beacon bases because once we have the beacons, um, we will be able to have complete coverage of our entire island uh, with all the beacon effects. And we, we used them while we were mining out the, uh, or flattening the islands. So they were super useful then. Let's turn this down because there's no reason to have it up so high anymore. And get into the nether. See, this is the only remnants of that old village. We're gonna make a better portal again. Uh, just, it's when we get around to it. So our nethers are a tunnel that is perfectly safe. Uh, I like to think so at least. Let's head north first on the tour today. Uh, so we're actually not gonna go too far north and we're gonna make a left here. This is a brand new tunnel. So if you've seen the previous world tours, you haven't seen this before. Uh, this goes out to the end, pop this off and we take a plunge after eight, cause it's been a while. There we go. Take a plunge down, and this is a double blaze spawner. Whenever you're standing down here, blazes will spawn, and you can stand here, open these up, and click away, and you get you get tons of blaze rods that way. Oh, there's some blaze heads. I'll, I'll actually take those. No, we have a bunch of blaze heads because of how efficient this farm is. Uh, it really starts cranking them out because there is two, but it takes a while for it to get going. Uh, I don't see any. Oh, there they are. Some falling down over there. Some coming through. They, they get pushed really slowly through the place, right? But uh, once they get spawning, they just keep coming. Oh, there's a ghast way up there. Hopefully you can't see me. So that they'll uh, they'll come this way. It takes it, it to actually fall off the edge. They need nudged, I think, usually by another guy or not. But you just whack them. The hoppers put the stuff in here four from one blaze that was a good it's a good rate all right let's get back up top this is a minecart elevator i don't know where i've seen this design from but i've just known it for forever we used that a couple times in the nether um so if we turn left and keep going north the next thing we're gonna see is this big red arrow that takes us to the spawn chunks down this tunnel We got a, we have blue ice for our boats to travel really fast on. Uh, so this is our spawn chunks though. Uh, this is actually, we only really spent like a week living here to get this iron farm up. And then we moved on to our island. We had found it by then. So this is a logical geek boy iron farm. We only built half of the modules. There's supposed to be eight, we built four, but it does plenty of iron for us. And it fills up from both sides at the same time. Uh, so. That means we're somewhere onto this third column of iron ingots, and we empty it pretty regularly. Uh, we get a bunch of poppies, and then the leftover poppies turn into bone meal. Uh, it's a great system. It's a great system. Yeah, logical geek boy there. Uh, then, elsewhere, uh, the next thing we had built was... Well, I'll show the shulker farm. This is a shulker farm by Ray's Works. It's his most recent one to date. Um, I think it gets us 200 something shells an hour. Uh, and honestly, oh, you just saw one die. That is far more than I'll ever need for a single player hardcore world. And we just keep uh, pumping them out. It's in the spawn chunks and it never stops. That is nine shulker boxes of shulker shells um, that just pile it up. It does have an auto shulker loader at the top. Um, yeah. 
Then over here, we have a moss farm. So all of that terraforming with the moss that we did, um, all that terraforming we did with the moss, uh, this is what got us our moss. It was a moss farm in the spawn chunks. And actually now we actually even added a bone meal farm underneath it. So each of these fills up a double chest, but it's completely full. And I added a lot of redstone to raise design uh, because we built four of them. So the, the four of them combined produce moss faster than the speed of hoppers. So we actually have a regulator here um, that will detect if the fullness level of this dropper and this farm at the bottom will only turn on when uh, this dropper is below a certain level. So it, it keeps this dropper from the three farms above always filling into it. And then when it reaches a certain level, it turns this one off to keep it constantly flowing into the chests at the speed of hoppers. Um, and there's also a lot of logic to detect uh, if it is full. That means if this if this hopper is filled up to a certain point, it turns off all the moss farms and uh, and then, yeah, they all stop. It sends the redstone signal up. There's even logic in here to pull out the moss instead of bone meal. So when there is uh, enough green blocks in this barrel, uh, the moss will go through this route or all the items will go this route and get and the moss will get pulled out by an item filter. Uh, but when this chest becomes a certain level of empty, uh, of green blocks uh, this hopper will get locked and the stuff will come through and just go straight in over there moss blocks included to make sure it keeps its running forever and ever and ever uh, and it's been working great we're actually going to separate these out now that we're done with the main island so that we can farm. The reason we built four of them is we're gonna have one that farms moss, one that farms azalea, one that farms flowering azalea, and one that farms carpets. Uh, but that's a project for a future date. Um, like we usually say, that's a problem for future kernel, not right now. So this is our spawn chunks. There's a there's a very this is where we lived actually when we first started, and it was in this village. I think this house to be exact. Kind of emptied it since then. And uh, our very first starter farm was there. Uh, and our villager breeder was here. But that's about it. It's about it. Um, hey guy, can you like not exist? Thank you. Then uh, the only things that exist now are individual farms. So that's the, the base and the spawn chunks are the only thing with multiple, multiple things in one location or one per portal so we're going to continue heading north and the next right you can see is here but that by signified by that arrow this is where we have our oh the first thing we're going to see is our barter farm v1 ominous uh, we no longer use this. It's been decommissioned. You will see why later, but this was a very simple six piglin barter farm um, that had, you know, all the different item filters that we could need. Uh, there's actually another quartz here. Hmm. Not that we'll like, we'll need it. Uh, but yeah, it was a very good early game farm for, uh, for these. And I am very proud of it for how long it was usable or what it was in use by us for all for all of our blackstone and gravel needs um next is the reason that's built where it is is because we had built our gold farm here using the same elevator so this gold farm is nembom's gold farm you know i think it's a little loud it's a little loud but they really pour down it's a great source of xp great source of gold uh, and if we drop back down a few layers, here we are. This is where we have all the gold go to. So there's ingots and ingots, the piglin heads, because we have mini heads and then it just fills up with tons and tons of nuggets. Uh, and about four hours of AFK will get us a whole shulker box of gold blocks, or at least in my experience, that's what it is. Uh, so we drop down and we continue heading down this in the same tunnel. Uh, and probably one of our only unfinished projects is down here is our ghast farm 
this is our main source of XP or main source of gunpowder for rockets and stuff. Uh, you can see actually, if you pay attention, um, ghasts popping in and going straight through the portal and going to the overworld. We don't have an easy way to get to those portals, but it's just a simple collection thing and it's not finished. Yeah, I just saw a gas pop in over there. Then uh, this here is the gold farm from above, from the outside. So everything that looked like we were enclosed for the killer is totally manufactured <laughs> and you're not actually too enclosed. Uh, you, you, it just looks like you're underground or whatever, but you're very much above the build height. Uh, and it and it works flawlessly. I can't wait to get back to this actually. Once the island is finished, we will get back to this because uh, it's important. So that's everything down this tunnel, but we're gonna turn right and keep going north. We have one more destination that is even further north. Uh, and that is the Peace de Resistance. Everyone's gonna kill me in the comments for saying that bad because I butchered whatever language that was uh, but this is our slime farm and I being a pink slime with pink slimes in my world have a god tier slime farm let's take a look let's take a look this is my slimy throne Let's turn, let's get the view going real quick. See you in a minute. Where we can sit and watch our eight chunk slime farm. Literally rain slime from above. So this is two chunks wide, four chunks deep. All of them are slime chunks. Um, and it produces slime like no one's business. We'll turn that off, save a little bit of lag. Um, we got golems down the sides. We got people feasting over here with uh, some buggy plates. Uh, everyone got to, you know, redeem their custom armor stands how they wanted, uh, wherever they wanted, holding whatever they wanted. But uh, this is the this is the actual rates of the farm right here. Oops, I don't want those. So this is the actual rate that we get we get uh, slime. So if, if we see this again, where I pick it up, how quick do we get a stack? We're probably not even picking it all up, honestly. I don't know, but we got a stack just there. It's very fast, very efficient, uh, and we have a lot of it. All the chests with lights are full up or in the process of filling. Uh, we do have a map of this location, and we, we did turn the entire land pink. It is wonderful. There's the eight chunks of farm. It looks pretty boring like this from this view, but then the whole terrain has just been turned pink all around it. Um, guess in the comments if you if you know how I turned it pink. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now let's turn it around and go south for a bit past our base portal. And I'll show you what we got over that way. So, uh, one left turn, and we're now heading south. We gotta go past a couple intersections. So this first intersection we're passing here is the gold farm intersection. Uh, the next one we're gonna be passing is the spawn chunks intersection. Yep, just past that. Then over here on the right, passing the blaze farm, passing the base, and then here, is the squid farm portal so uh these guys got to redeem obviously but the squid farm has absolutely been killing it and i only did like one short afk session there and it filled up a whole barrel full of shulker boxes of squid more than we'll ever need um they come through with the classic unloader into a shulker box loader here uh and, it, and it's amazing <clears throat> but more down this tunnel is uh, there are replacement barter farm V2. So what you do is you split your gold between these eight chests evenly, and then you drop on down. And then you can open this up. Oh, are they mad at me? Oh, they're mad at me. I'm not wearing gold. Mm, mm, yeah, not wearing gold. But they will uh, barter with you very, very quickly. Uh, this is a Nembomb design. 
Uh, and we have all kinds of item filters out there that are extremely fast, all going into shulker loaders that go at double speed. Uh, and we can get shulker boxes of each one and we can configure with these levers like we can say uh or, or we have right here say don't collect any uh any leather we, we have enough leather we let the rest of it burn right um and but we do want obsidian and crying obsidian uh though we've taken it all home <laughs> and this is where we fill in shulker boxes uh so this chest will fill all of these filters uh, that that chest will fill all of these filters uh, Like we're not we're not saving any soul sand um, Then that chest is the only one that's not filled yet and uh, But we don't use we have both of these turned off because we don't need we, we don't need either of those but the whole reason we built this was for gravel to do our terraforming because we're using so much concrete and as you can see we've completely dwindled it but this is how much blackstone we've gotten meaning we've gotten an equal amount of concrete from it uh it is quite a lot of concrete er, of of materials we've pulled out of this beast um and i don't ever know what we'll do with the blackstone but we're not going to throw that amount of blackstone away i'll gladly collect it for eternity and eternity and eternity um, but yeah, this was this was done fairly recently too. This was done within the last month or two um, And then down here at the end is our very very basic and sad end portal um, I you know, there's got there's gonna be a day where I have no motivation to work on anything And that's gonna be the day that we need to come here and make this end portal beautiful We actually have nothing built in the end We've only ever been there to kill the dragon a handful of times and to go uh, End city raiding and bring back sh uh, shulkers, but we've never built anything in the end um, I just I've got the gold farm. I don't need an enderman farm uh, it just hasn't been in the books, but I do want to make that portal room look lovely one day. I have a sweet idea We'll get to it one day Heading south again, we're on to our last of our uh, Portals here We have first on our l oh oh yeah we okay this has changed it used to this portal used to be over there but we actually had a problem with it sinking and we fixed it i had completely forgotten we fixed that so this is the portal we're going to go through first where this is going to take us to our uh hero of the vill no this is going to take us to our um pillager farm right so this used to be a pillager outpost down there um, you can see the original footprint is still right there uh, But we've tore it down and Made them a nice clean spawning platform where they get attracted to some golems and make their way up the tube Make their way up the tube indeed and then uh, yeah, we can we can kill them we can get their drops They don't drop anything too useful. So we don't have a lot of storage here We'll drop all the crossbows. We don't want them. We don't want them at all. Save it for just the banners, I guess, and some other junk. Um, but we do get we do get mob heads from them. But that's that's not a big deal right now. Uh, then, oh shoot, I didn't look out the window. Let me look out the window and show you what we're heading to next. The next thing we're headed to is actually our raid farm. And it's way over there uh, So both of these farms are designed by Chapman on YouTube Ooh, It's actually a thunderstorm Oh, this is also a snowy biome. We should set up cauldrons Okay, they are so loud Let me get out of here. All right, just set up cauldrons there for uh, collecting powdered snow But uh, over here is the last portal. We're gonna visit uh, is the raid farm Good. No raid going on, but the uh, raid farm they'll spawn up top how uh, in that platform that we saw Ow! God. That thunder is really Ill. really going off So when the raid first starts we can stop them here and whack them so we can get here of the village Then open that up and let them fall all the way down to where they can die of fall damage 
And uh, this is where we get all of our totems of undying. We've popped six totems in the uh, 13 months that we've been playing on this server. So, you know, we haven't had to use this ever since we finished it. We, we, we uh, pulled out enough totems, brought it back, and we've only ever popped six. Uh, one of those was fairly recently, and we had a seven month gap of no totems being uh, popped. So for, for you know, being hardcore, I think that's very, very, very good on my part. Uh, but that is it for everything we have in this world, chat. It's been an amazing 6,000 days, 6,002 days now in hardcore to get here. It's been a ton of work and I can't wait to show you what it looks like at 7,000 days. Uh, so back at the base, I grab my boat. Have these boat stations at each one, you know, barrel and our ender chest. Uh, our ender chest has, uh, you know, one box for flight, food, then tools, and then spare armor and more, uh, more uh, obscure tools, valuables, stuff for beacons, and redstone always with us. And then a ton of empties because we got tons of shulkers. Uh, got lodestones with uh, in both the overworld and the nether for uh for bringing us home when we go out adventuring but we haven't really done that we've got a lot of work to do at home we don't need to go on adventures too often but we will be in 1.18 plus the land underneath the island is going to get deeper but chat thank you so much for viewing my six thousand day world tour and uh if you are watching on youtube or TikTok or uh, twitter or any other platform that i upload to please drop me a follow on twitch.tv slash kernel kohler link will be below or pinned or in the bio or something uh and you can see this world forming before your eyes it's a slow grindy process but the payoff well you've seen it here it's flipping massive dude I'll see you in a thousand more days.